Today I have a peplum top and a dress to share. They both have a square neckline, navy blue peplum, print with purple dress. There's also a super fun scalloped hem. Lots of sewing to see. Don't leave. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. I'm super happy today to bring you some woven sewing. As you know, it's one of my favorite ways to sew. Yes, it does take a little longer. Yes, you have to take a bit more caution with a few steps, but the results are always amazing and the fabrics that you can find are amazing. And today is about the salt whistle, peplum and dress, a new pattern from Love Notions. It was released yesterday. A few hours ago, you would have seen already a video where I featured 12 woven patterns that have a square neckline. And the salt whistle was included in there as well as how to sew the technique for this neckline with a facing. So there's already a snippet of content about the salt whistle on the channel. It is general content because the salt whistle is not the only design out there with a square neckline that has a facing. So I think it would be useful to have it separately. I think it's adorable and there are lots of options for you to choose the style that you find fits you better. The main feature there is that there is a bodice, there is a seam at the waist. If you are sewing the full bust option, you have a bust that there for shaping and there's a square neckline. Now it's not too wide, it's not too deep. You won't have issues with your bra strap showing there, so that's really nice. Finished with a facing really neatly. About the arm situation, you have several options. One of them is sleeveless, and you do actually have a separate bodice in the pattern if you wanna make it sleeveless. The shape here is a little different, a bit more closed. You know, when I typically convert a pattern that is not supposed to be sleeveless to sleeveless, I do a few things. Well, here, if you want it sleeveless, you don't have to do that because there is a specific sleeveless bodice there that you can cut out, so that's great. I cut both bodices out, one for the sleeveless version and then for sleeves, you can cut out a tiny little piece that's gathered. He only covers partially the armhole. Looks a little bit like wings. <laughs> I don't know. It's called a ruffle sleeve because it is actually a ruffle. It's all gathered there. And then you have bishop sleeves that can be short or long. These have slight gathering here at the sleeve cap. One is short and has elastic there with a casing or long, you know, with the casings. For the skirt, it can be short and you have a peplum top. I've done that. <laughs> or you can make a dress. And the dress can be just a single layer skirt. That's what I've done. Or you can layer three, or you can have three layers there. And you would use the pattern piece for the peplum, one skirt that goes in the middle and then the longer one, and then just stack them all up and join them to the bodice, as you can see in the line out there. What is striking here is the type of hem. You can see it's a scalloped hem and it's finished really neatly inside with a facing that's interfaced. Now the most comfortable feature here is that the bodice and the skirt, when you sew them together there's a lot of ease. And the way that you get any shape here is with a casing with an elastic. The way that the casing is finished inside is super neat. I super enjoyed that. You don't have the elastic touching your skin at all. Salt Whistle was just released. It's on sale through Monday the 25th of July. It's 24% off, that's the calculation I took. <laughs> Regular price $12.50 and it's $9.50, so it's $3 off. My mind works better with percentages, that's why I give them to you, because I just love percentages. <laughs> Remember to use my affiliate link that supports the work that I do here if you enjoy my content. And don't forget to use my code KARINA10 when you're checking out, because you get an extra 10% off on top of the sale price. Any day that you want to buy any pattern, you know, so that's cool. So all the information is always down below in the description box. And I'm also putting this helpful information on a pinned comment. If you want to check there and that's easier, you also find my link there as well. You can use any type of woven fabric that you want actually <laughs> from lightweight and very drapey to a bit more structured. Maybe too heavyweight, I wouldn't go there, but you can see in my diagram an example of the more structured fabrics. Some of them can be very light, like cotton lawn. I wouldn't make this with a quilting cotton if it's too heavy, just my opinion. <laughs> the skirt isn't too voluminous that you really need the fabric to flow. I think you could get away with making it with something more structured. And I would like to make one of these in linen, a peplum top. I think that would be really cute. For my versions, I've chosen a Swiss dot navy rayon. It's really pretty, really nice and textured. There's 14% of linen snug into the mix right there. I say it's rayon because it's mainly rayon, but there's a tad of linen there and I think it makes a little bit of a difference. And my second version is a poly crepe in a beautiful print, very light and flowy also works. Salt whistle is not meant to be tight at all. There is a regular bust and a full bust option. Now for Love Notions, I have sewn the full bust option only on some woven patterns. 
usually the drafting for the full bust is too much for me with neat patterns but for wovens I'm seeing the benefit for myself because I'm sort of borderline if I need it or not and I tend to just go with a regular bust in this case the full bust option has a bust dart I love bust darts I think they give me such good shape my bust volume I would say is medium-ish towards large-ish so that's why I'm sort of in between but definitely for this style the full bust option gives me a better fit now depending if you're doing the regular or the full bust you have positive ease at the bust of three and a half to five and a half inches at the waist lots because it's elasticized super good now I sewed a straight size extra large full bust I didn't need to blend sizes I think if you need to blend sizes here it's a little bit different than other patterns because of the scallop shape at the bottom so you can't really add to the side seam or change the final width at the bottom of the skirt because the shape of the scallops is really exact and the same so you can't change the bottom of the skirt so if you have a larger hip size print the skirt pieces for the hip size so that at the bottom of the skirt you have that unchanged and you have your facing pieces for that size so for example if you needed a size 2x for your hips but up above here you're a large for example that's fine print out your large bodice print out that size there for your skirt pieces print your 2x because that's what you need for your hips and then at the top of the skirt you can blend in to the size that's going to fit the bodice that's what I'm going to say you can't really just eyeball it and add to the side you, you just can't <laughs> you have to keep the bottom of the skirt the same so it doesn't interfere with the beautiful scallops the shapes and the facing that you have there I did do minor changes to the bodice and I did them all by flat pattern measurement so I didn't make a muslin I did draw my seam allowances in and measure my bust height on the pattern and for once in my life I had to raise the bust that <laughs> full bust option I had to bring it up by half an inch which is fine I'm just fine tuning it because I really want it exact and when I measured the when I measured the waist height from here from the base of my neck down to the waist front and back it was measuring exactly what my bodice measures so if this was a fit and flare dress where there's no elasticated waist detail that would have been perfect but because we have a wide bodice and a wide skirt that comes in with elastic you need a bit of blousing there if you would just make it exactly as per your body and then bring it in it's just going to come up <laughs> that's how it works I added one inch to the length of my bodice front and back there is a short and a lengthened line for you to be able to do that and I got just the enough of blousing that I need for this design for the peplum I didn't make any change I used the original length there but for the skirt I added two and a half inches so that it actually hits above my knee I'm a little taller very typical adjustments and as I mentioned you don't want to mess with the scallops and because it is a rectangle you can sort of just add it at the top if you want or you can cut it in the middle of the pattern and add it you know it's very easy to add the length there because there's no specific shape that you need to keep I have a lot of fun sewing prepared for you there will be a chunk missing in the sewing steps and it's because I've already shown it in the previous video where I discussed square necklines you'll see the whole technique there if you want to just click back and catch up you can see the whole technique there and that technique will apply for the salt we saw or other patterns that have a simple square neckline with a facing so that content is already up we're going to see some prep work general construction how to unite the bodice with the skirt i find really interesting and most importantly all the little tips that are going to help you get beautiful beautiful scallops that are symmetrical that are rounded and that are going to look amazing so let's hop into the sewing I'm stabilizing the square neckline opening with a strip of interfacing it's just very very lightweight non-stretch as you can see I've kept the pattern piece there so I can know that this is the correct shape and that nothing is getting bended or distorted this is rayon it could sort of turn out a different shape if you're not careful after doing the first side then I flip it to the other side I don't have the pattern piece anymore but the side that I already interfaced is sort of my template how it looks it's really neat this won't be seen it will all be hidden inside and it's going to keep this area super stable without stretching out and distorting this is the back neckline and i did the exact same thing i just took a little bit of interfacing and stabilized it there with the help of the pattern piece as a template this is what i'm doing instead of stay stitching i'm cutting out the facings for the square neckline this is the front neckline i have a piece that's a little larger than my pattern piece 
This fabric has already been interfaced, so as usual, I'm block fusing. Rayon, when it's interfaced, does turn out pretty stable. It means I can just place the pattern piece and not use pins. With the corners, I don't want to go right in there with the blade because I don't want to cut past the corner. So I'm purposely leaving a tiny little bit there uncut. And at the end, I'm going to cut with my snipper just into those corners. Here you can see the back facing. I have already interfaced that. Now the pattern pieces came like this, placed on the fold. I just created whole pieces so that I was able to cut it like that. I find it more accurate that way. And the same for the back. So that's how the pattern piece was. I just added more paper and created a whole piece. Here I'm cutting the facing. You see the scalloped edges. This has to be really exact. And here again, instead of placing this on the fold, I've ex created an extended piece so that it's easier to cut. I'm also being careful with these little points right there. I have this to finalize that corner. The thing is, if I go through the rotary cutter that way and that way a little bit, I can cut into the seam allowance and I don't want to do that. So this is how I'm dealing with these little bits right there. I'm also block fusing this. You can see I have a little bit of excess material there. It's already been interfaced. I place the top edge there along the top there where it's already been interfaced so that doesn't move. And I just put anything there to create weight. I don't want to put pins because when you put pins, the pattern pieces sort of lift up and it's just not that accurate that way. So I'm doing it like that. I've cut the casing that's going to go on the inside for the elastic just on the straight of grain. There's no curve around the waist. You can do this with a straight of grain. If you want, you can cut it on the bias. But I don't think for something straight, it has to be on the bias. So this is almost two inches right there. And when I put it through the bias tape maker that says 25, I'm going to end up with a finished width of one inch. And that's the width of bias tape that you need if you're going to use store-bought bias tape. I just want to make mine out of the same fabric. Here I'm putting my piece of tape through the bias tape maker, although this is not cut on the bias. The tool works really, really well. Now I've taken it off the bias tape maker and one of the folds, I'm just pressing it flat once again. I basically just want one of these folds there. The other long end, I want it raw because that's what's going to go sewn onto the bodice union with the skirt. This is how I ensure that the fold is really neat and even all the way. It's just easier this way. These are the pattern pieces for the salt whistle peplum. If you're making the dress, it's the same thing. These two skirt pieces will just be longer. Everything else will be the same. These are the bodice pieces. They're both cut on the fold. That is the back. And here's the front where you can see the square neckline. There are the two facing pieces already interfaced. On the skirt pieces at the bottom, you can see the scallops right there. And to finish that edge, we have the facing pieces that have the same shape there. Those have been block fused also. Sleeve. It looks wide because it's going to be gathered there at the sleeve cap and then here at the hem, the binding piece that's going to finish the union between the bodice and the skirt inside and it's going to act like a casing for the elastic. Here's the front bodice piece and I have my bust starts pinned. This is only an option you'll see in the full bust option. If you're sewing the regular bust, you won't have a dart. Just easy, I'll just sew them from the narrow tip of the dart down to the widest part. At the tip of the dart, I didn't back tie. Put the needle down right on the edge. I will just do a few hand knots here. And repeat the same on the other side. This design has a lovely square neckline and all the sewing part of the square neckline will be in a separate video, of course, because it is a general technique. So you can look for it with this thumbnail and it's always going to be linked down below because the technique can work for this pattern and other patterns. So go ahead and watch that. I'll see you back to finish this bodice. In the next clip, we would have already done the shoulders or the facing, the neckline, and we'll be back to sew these side seams. We pick up our bodice again, very easy. I've just pinned the side seams. I had already surged the edges so the seams can be pressed open. Thank you. 
We also need to sew the side seams of the peplum piece or the skirt. The only difference is the length of the seam. There's no difference in the sewing technique. We also have to sew the little side seams of the facings. These are interfaces you can see and this shape is going to be sewn onto there. This little shape that you see on the side seam, you won't see it on the pattern. So on the pattern, you just see it nice and smooth like that. I just did that to true it because I plan to press my seams open. When I open this up, you can see that the edge is going to go all the way down to the bottom. This is just fine tuning it, you know. It would have worked anyway if I hadn't have done that. It's just that then this would end up a little shorter right there. But this is why mine looks like that. Now that we've sewn the side seams of the peplum and the facing, I'm going to take this straight edge here and serge it. Another alternative is for you to fold it under by a quarter of an inch and just press it and leave it like that for later. I think just having a serged edge is going to be less bulky and acceptable. So I'm just going to go ahead and tidy up this raw edge and then we can sew this onto the bottom of the skirt or peplum. I've taken my time and I've put my facing right sides together with the skirt. This is the bottom. Here I've joined the side seams of the facing with the side seams of the skirt or peplum and I hand basted them close to the edge there. I've drawn a tiny little dot on every area I'm going to pivot. I want that to be super accurate so that the scallops end up being the same size. And instead of sewing this with 3 8 I'm going to sew with a quarter of an inch. Won't make much of a difference other than having my peplum or skirt like an eighth of an inch longer. So in the grand scheme of things, it won't make a difference. What is going to make a difference is me using my quarter inch presser foot because it's going to help me sew really, really accurate here. It'll take a while to go through all the scallops all the way around. And then once we do that, I'm going to snip into each of these little points there and then flip this to the other side. There you can see the seam, it's really neat and it's so much easier doing it with a quarter inch presser foot. So I think that's how I'm going to do all of mine. I was really careful to pivot exactly on the dots that I'd done. No one's going to see the dots. Now there's quite a bit of snipping to do. You do need to snip into these so that we can turn the fabric and it will have that nice shape. So you see that when you snip, you're able to turn this like that and then like that and you're going to get that nice scallop shape. So I'm just going to take my time and snip and turn all of this under. Whenever I have curved edges that I want to turn, I'd rather do this by hand basting than going to the iron and burning my fingers, trying to roll the seam. So you can see that I've rolled it to the inside, leaving about a sixteenth of an inch there. So it's like I've understitched, but I didn't. I've just rolled the seam to the inside a little bit so that what you can see from this side is super clean. So now that I've hand basted that all along, I'm going to go and press this. Once it's nice and pressed and flat, I'm also going to hand baste this down so it doesn't move anywhere and then I can top stitch it. I'm on the ironing board, just pressing everything nice and flat. The basting I did along the edge just helps the seam roll nice and evenly without me burning my fingers or anything like that. So I don't regret the time it took. While keeping it flat here, I hand basted the top edge of the facing so that it's nice and flat. And now I can go ahead and top stitch. Really easy to top stitch with all that basting thread. I don't need to worry about having pins there or anything. I've removed the basting stitches and that's how it looks. I'm just going to give it another little press. But I think the scallops turned out amazing. They're very, very nice and neat. 
nice and round, symmetrical. They have all the same shape. There's no pointy edges in the scallops. So all the extra work I think paid off. On the inside you can see the seam is rolled towards the inside by a tiny bit. I did that with my fingers. Can't see the facing from the outside. We need to run a quick gathering stitch across the top because this is going to be slightly gathered into the bodice. What I've done here is I've got the bodice inside and the skirt on the outside. They are both right sides together there and I put pins to mark the centers match the side seams and then I put the threads from here to the center from here to the center to gather it in so you can see it's not that much gathering if you are doing the regular bust option I think you would have a little bit more gathering on the peplum just because the bodice would have a little bit less space at the waist but it won't be anything too noticeable we need to identify the center back and I've got it right here with a pin and what we need to do now is take this tape that I'd made previously. This is the way we're going to finish it inside. It's going to hide the seams, going to make it comfortable on the skin and it's also going to be the casing. I'm going to take one end. This is the folded edge. I'm going to take the raw edge and match it up here on the top but I'm going to fold this in like that. I'm going to match this up here right at the center back and just start pinning this on top of the two layers. You can see that my tape and my peplum are both wrong sides up so it's right side to wrong side. This is where the folded edge is right here on the top so I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it all the way along until I get back to here on the other side when we sew all of this together we're gonna be sewing three layers and then this is gonna cover that seam okay I've finished putting the tape on top I couldn't deal with all the pins so I, did, I ended up hand basting this it's just more comfortable to sew you know so I've got gathering in between the front bodice the peplum and then the tape on top at the center back you can see I've got them folded in by 3 8 So now we're just going to go ahead and sew all these layers together. After sewing this, I'm just going to trim the seam allowance to about half of the 3 8 just to reduce the bulk so just trim away all the way around here I've got it wrong sides up this is where we've sewn the tape trim the seam allowance now we need to just flip this tape up towards the bodice this way this is the peplum there and you can see that now this tape is going to cover that seam there that opening is going to allow us to put the elastic through later and now I'm just pressing all of this up after pressing it I'm going to hand baste it along the top and then top stitch Here's the bodice, this is the back neckline. We go up and see, and you can see that the tape was sewn on there and flipped up towards the bodice. So I've just pressed it, tidied it, and given it a hand base there to keep it in place. You can see the gathering here is very slight. Once we get the elastic in here, it will gather more. But remember we had this opening here where the two ends of the tape joined I ended up just closing it together just closing it and around here I'm gonna leave a gap just like an inch open so I can put the elastic in and then I'll stitch it closed like that I thought it was just gonna be easier like that This winter is just ridiculous. It's so hot. <laughs> Got a little tissue there. Anyway, I'm excited to show you. I did show you a sneak peek of this one in the square neckline tutorial. So you've already seen the fabric and I showed a little picture. <laughs> but here is my first thought we saw peplum top. The fabric is very drapey. I had wanted a navy top like this for ages. I'd just been dreaming about it. And I had this fabric like right there where I could see it at the top of my collection because it had to be made soon. I really wanted to make it. So this is super pretty, square neckline there. You know, I decided to top stitch my neckline because the fabric is really, really floppy inside and I didn't really want that facing moving around. I did it with care, you saw how I did that by placing it flat on the ironing board, hand basting and then stitching it down. So it's very neat, very pretty. I can just pull it on, lovely shape. It's very nice and crisp inside. It's got under stitching. Look, the facings, I opted to serge the edges. It's perfectly neat. It looks pretty. Another option is not to serge the edge, but just leave it raw and then fold it in by a quarter of an inch and then top stitch. But for these fabrics, I think that would have looked really bulky. 
and I have matching soldier thread, so there's really no reason why I would have to do that. But you can if you want to. Here I have my short sleeve. It's got a little bit of gathers there on the top. Now these sleeves are so easy to set in. Oh my gosh, you don't have to ease it in and try not to get a pucker. It's just so, so easy. And then at the bottom, you just hem it, leave a little gap here, put your elastic, voila. I measured the elastic against my arm to make sure it wasn't gonna be too tight. It's fine, it's just customized to my arm, you know? I have a super helpful video on how to set in woven sleeves that includes a sleeve with a sleeve cap that has gathers. So this is how the thumbnail looks. Have a look at that video. I put a lot of effort into those videos that are sort of resources for any pattern. So you can go back there and get much more in-depth information than if I tried to just film it over and over and over, you know? So go ahead and look at that. Here at the bottom is the waist seam with a casing. So there's just a seam there on the top holding the casing from inside. Look, you can use store-bought bias tape if you want. Because it's all straight and around, I wouldn't bother making bias tape cut on the bias. I would just make tape. <laughs> I just cut the whole fabric and then I just trimmed away what I didn't need. And I put it through the bias tape maker as you saw. So it doesn't need to be on the bias, what goes inside, because this is straight. And here are the lovely scallops. They couldn't be neater. I'm so proud of them. I think definitely if you have a quarter inch presser for, it's going to make your job much, much easier because all you need to do is sew carefully and just let the presser foot guide you along the curves and all of them are going to turn out amazing than if you just try to freehand sort of eyeball your seam allowance as you go. I think in that case you could end up with some that don't look the same as the others. If I had sewn it at 3 eighths of an inch I would have trimmed it down to a quarter of an inch or even less because it just makes it easier to turn. This is how it looks inside, super pretty, shoulder seams open, not surged together, I just thought it's less bulky that way. Same as the side seam, I pressed them open like that. The hem is beautifully finished with the scallop, hem is beautifully finished with that facing there, so nice. There's no other way you can finish a scallop to anything, it has to be a facing, or else how are you going to get the curve, you know? You know Love Notions has a Cebu illusion skirt collection that has a bunch of patterns for knits. There's one that I've made a bunch of times, a pencil skirt. Now I have a beautiful ponty print that has navy and pink and white. Yeah, I made this navy blouse thinking to pair it with that. <laughs> it's just a great match, so let's see. This is my first salt whistle and for this one I made the peplum version. This is a navy rayon Swiss dot, really comfy elasticated waist, peplum hem, square neckline, and I've got the short puff sleeve. I've paired it over one of my Sibyl Illusion pencil skirts. It has a lot of colors. I really like the mix of the colorful skirt with the solid top here. Really enjoyed sewing this one and you'll see the details up closer. Here you can see the scalloped hem, a little bit of blousing at the waist there. There is an elastic inside a casing. It's super comfortable to wear. Gallop inside is finished with a really neat facing. Very fun sewing technique. You just need to slow down a little bit for them to turn out really accurate and symmetrical. Not something you do every day. I really like the amount of ease that this pattern has everywhere. Just comfortable to wear but not completely oversized. It's a style I really enjoy. Here is my square neckline. I've always liked the square neckline. It's got a really neat facing inside. Bishop sleeves have a little casing at the hem and that is how it looks at the back. Here's a closer look at the sleeve and it's all very neat and very enjoyable to sew. I have top stitched down that facing for this one just for comfort and I don't need to worry about that facing moving around inside. Lovely, after finishing this one I was super excited to get going with a printed dress. I'm always excited when I really love the first version I make and Love Notions no exception. I see many more to come. Super comfy, love it. I love this dress, oh my gosh, I love it so much. I've already made a blouse with this fabric and I visited a shop I go to occasionally and I saw that they still had that fabric there in the bolts. 
I immediately got a bunch more because I love it so much. It's so pretty. Pink, purple, gray, black, white. I mean, what's not to love? And I love prints that are like this. Like it's nothing. It's not flowers. It's nothing. It's just splashes of whatever and it's so pretty so light i finished the sleeveless armholes with store-bought bias tape just to save time it was really pressed for time i had to film so many of these steps twice because i lost some footage that meant seem ripping a few steps so i can film them again yeah it's not fun but it's part of what i do right i also have an amazing video that helps you how to sew bias tape on armholes and necklines with so much detail this is how it looks have a look at that one those types of videos are always super high production they, they take me days to make and i hope you enjoy them the scallops are just as nice you can see there the facing in there this is an amazing dress because the fabric is already crinkled so if it gets a little wrinkled no one's gonna know here's the inside maybe you can see some details here with this print the wrong side is just a little lighter in color but the facing is also top stitched and very neat the binding look i had so much fabric i could have made my own bias binding but i was just so pressed for time this is not inferior though it's super soft and you know i like to do it narrow and the union of the bodice with the skirt is so nice with this technique you know that tape is sewn on and then flipped up and sewn so the elastic is in there very nice super neat not hard to do at all now i think this dress can go a long way i've styled it in two ways one that's super casual look it's not casual casual but semi-casual <laughs> it's all got to do with the shoe and the handbag choice i have several options in purple one that's a bit more casual and another that's a bit more formal so i had a lot of fun with that and i could just see that outfit in my head because i love my purple stuff let's see this is my second salt whistle and this time i have it in a dress length version the sewing technique is the same in this case i have a sleeveless version there is a separate bodice for the sleeveless option compared to the one that has the sleeves very nice printed crepe i've paired it with a more casual type of footwear and handbag all in purple and it's just the perfect dress to go and spend your whole day in super comfortable Just the perfect amount of ease at the hips, right there, not too voluminous. My favorite type of skirt, <laughs> really love it. And those scallops at the hem are super adorable, super cute. Really enjoy this one. Lovely square neckline. I've got some bias tape inside to finish the sleeveless armhole. I love the cover of the armhole, it's just perfect, doesn't show anything. Here's a closer look at the neckline. And I have used store bought satin bias tape there. Super love it. I'm always stretching that so you can see how comfortable it is at the waist. It's just the best thing to not have anything tight there. And the ease everywhere is just just right I really love it I had I wanted to pair this up with more formal looking shoes and handbag though you'll see that next So here is the exact same dress, this time I've got a pointy type of shoe with a heel. I love these open heel type of shoes, lovely handbag, I love it so much. You know, I would definitely go to something that needs to be a bit more formal like this and the dress is so versatile that way. I love it, just really, really love it. Look, I have plans to make more of these. I hope I can get them done before the release week is over. I have some sneaky cheat cut ones that could be simplified. I wanna make one in a knit. I wanna make one with scallops, but different, not the way you think. I just, I just really like it. I love how it feels on, love how it looks, and I'd love to have time to make a few more. So let's see if that happens. Don't forget to get your pattern when it's 24% off. My link, my affiliate link is always down below. 
all from me today. I'll see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye!